Welcome to the adventures of the newly crowned and very young King Paolini of The Rock. Tiny little child whose father was unfortunately just didn't know when to quit. Couldn't stop himself from trying to tame the dragon. Something like six or seven failed attempts before finally being chomped horribly, eaten for dragon food. Why? Another, another character. Tragically, RNG robs another character from me. Nothing I could do to stop it. All hail as grace, King Paolini of the uh, House Martin. First the name, King of the Rock of the Westlands. Lord of King's Landing. Shield of Lannisport and Protector of the Realm. I don't think any of our Disney members have ever been to Lannisport. And, oh, wait. Oh, what? What is this one? Hang on. A, a lunch with dragons. The Martin dynasty is famous for their desperation when it comes to dragon taming. Unfortunately for them, the previous kings found themselves better at feeding dragons than taming them. King Gunther Martin, having studied the failures of his presumably also tasty predecessor, was the closest to succeeding in dragon taming endeavors, having survived six attempts as a starter before eventually becoming the main course. After each failure, he made meticulous notes of the dragon, their behaviors, and their anatomy, hoping to inform and warn future Amuz Bush of what to expect. We gain a brand new dragon bloodline. Sexy and shiny and brand new to the video game, the dragon's dinner bloodline. 500% dragon slaying chance, all in exchange for dragon taming chance. Because I feel like the 250% dragon taming modifier from our bloodline is just not fair, given that that's the one thing we've significantly and consistently failed at doing. How about instead of taming dragons, we slay dragons. How about instead of trying to match Lazar and trying to, let's be honest, basically just win the campaign at quite literally a, a click of the button. Why don't we kill the dragons? Why don't we undo the damage that George did to this realm by annihilating them all? I don't think we've ever killed a dragon before in the Game of Thrones world as well. So I think that could be a, that could be a hell of a legacy. A legacy of dragon slayers. No more dragon riders. We've had enough dragon riders to last us a lifetime. But dragon slayers, that's something new and previously unseen. So, how are we going to go about turning... Avenging. Our, at the age of Babby, King Paolini decides... I must avenge my father. I must slay this mighty beast that is that is slain my father. Who else did it kill? Uh, it was... Ah, oh, there he is. Uh, Asimov as well also got eaten by, by a slightly different dragon. We need vengeance. And we need fire and blood, except in not, not in that order and not necessarily those words either. So first things first, we need ourselves a, a warrior capable of training us in dragon slaying ways. And there are only two formidable fighters in the world that actually want to join our court without having to yeet a bunch of cash at them. That is Ella Swanshield and Elwood, commander of the hair he of the he. What is that? Hedge Knights. There we are. Um, I was going to say Ella's probably not worth recruiting, and then I realised she's got rabies. So I feel like that's definitely. Oh, they're both of the Hedge Knights as well. Is that the same title? Uh, yeah, they're both of the Hedge Knights as well. Wow, that's strange. Although not really much of a surprise, I guess that Hedge Knights would happen to have formidable fighters. Anyway, we're going to invite this guy to court. God knows why he wants to join us rather than sticking with his current liege, but we'll invite him. Actually, there could have been someone better. Why don't we take another look very quickly? Because to make him, to, to, to have him command, or to have him teach our child, we have to put him as marshal, and then maybe someone better out there. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. For mid, there we are. Um, let's go, instead of join court, let's go join court any and see if there's someone we could bribe with slightly higher marshal. Uh, yeah, oh no, wait. I think it has to be male as well. Um, he's not bad. Duelist. Just, I mean, he's got formidable fighter. More importantly, just. Quite clearly cruel. Oh, he does have just, though. Um, he's a knight as well. Okay, I feel like this guy's a better choice, but there's no reason we can't invite both and have one as a backup. The only downside to this guy is he's a drunkard with gonorrhea, but everyone likes to party. Let's bring him on board, and we'll decide when they're both here which one to go for. Um, I don't think either. I, I'm not getting involved with politics. Why are they asking a baby to resolve that? That seems, seems a bit foolish to resolve their issues. The funeral... And so it is done. King Gunther Martin was killed by the dragon Valeron on 16th, 10th moon, 8585, at the age of 26. He was a man who was known to be most courageous and persistent. I think if anything else, we can say that he was definitely persistent. He was merely a competent swordsman and old warrior songs are written of. Holding a few laurels removed from us and we gain Ford's party and our guests leave. Thank you. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. Mighty Gunther of the Rock. We will slay the dragon Valeron. Val, Val, Valrion? I don't know how you say that. We'll kill that dragon, and then that will give us great practice for destroying the Empire of Lazar, the people who still control the Iron Throne. We're going to have to go to war with them eventually, and they have way too many dragons for us to try and contend with. So becoming a dragon slayer would be, would be really cool. Anyway, 
Where's the other guy? Did I did I just send them a gift and forget to invite them to court? Bollocks. That sounds like something I'd do. Um Uh or or not. Or they're both here. Uh Maya. Uh... No, they're both here. There's another guy as well there, just sat. He's a pretty good hunter. Oh, I'm not gonna get too bogged down in this. Right, so let's go ahead and sack our marshal as long as he's not our regent. We're good. Uh, and obviously, we want to get for only one of the formidable fighters. Yeah, this guy is better than the other one we dug up there. So we'll go ahead and give it to Joffrey. So Joffrey of Manning Hall. We're gonna have him train children. 22.98% chance yearly from the age of Babby is obviously an incredible start. We also want to make sure our vassals are relatively happy, bearing in mind that that's two. Uh, I will say two vassals, two, two kings in a row that have. Um, had relatively short lives, but I will, will make sure that we go and make sure everyone's bribed, bearing in mind that we've had a lot of quite short lifespans. Not, not my fault. Not my fault. How am I supposed to control our guy being eaten by a dragon? I bribed who I can. We are going to have to wait a while on some of these other vassals, though. To be honest, we've got like, what would you say? About 40% of our vassals have a positive opinion. Unfortunately, a lot of powerful ones very much do not. Oh, God. Rupert Martin was killed by Boris Baratheon. We have to fuck up these Baratheons. Oh, God, these fucking Baratheons. They screwed us so many times. And now who owns Storm's End? Oh, it's luckily it's another Martin. Okay. I thought that the Baratheon having killed him, the, the, the Stormlands might have not had a successor. Luckily, we're, we're still in power there. I need to do something about these goddamn Baratheons. They're seriously driving me mad. Uh, let's go ahead and set crown folks in King Sanning. Besides that, what else can we do, really? Uh, we've got to make sure our master, our maester is overseeing court. 12% chance yearly. And then making sure we've got a good guardian. That's basically all we can do for young... Paolini. Um, I'm looking for a genius, genius, patient, diligent. Ignore that. You saw nothing. A genius, patient, diligent person capable of being our educator. Let's go join court. Yes. No one. Oh, God. Um, genius, diligent, perhaps? Genius, dill, as Balthazar. God, he's got 20 martial, though. He's genius. He's brilliant commander. He's just, he's slothful. Oh, he's not bad. He's good enough to be our educator until we find someone better. We're really looking for someone charitable. Um, so it's, oh, he's the only genius character in the world when it's going to a court. Well, let's try the diligent patient combination instead. Um, look for diligent, patient, brave, erudite, family person, knight, skilled fighter, brilliant commander. This guy could be the one. Willem, join me. Uh, what's he got? 20 martial as well. To be fair, anything over 12 makes no difference at that stage. The only thing he's really missing is charitable. Um, but yeah, he's incredible. He's a much better educator than the last guy we found. Right, so Willem. A sign guardian, you two, mighty king, whatever our name is. Who are we right now? Uh, Paolini. Why can't we assign? Oh, right, because we need to do us, don't we? Ooh. All right, assign guardian. And then, where is he? Uh, Willem. He's, he's actually insanely good. Is that we've got this guy, this guy. I'll see who we've already got at our court. Um, honestly, the formidable fight would also be pretty good. Bear in mind, he could then force train us as well. But he's got some pretty questionable traits. Cruel... Actually, I guess Cruel will be the only one he can pass on, and Cruel isn't necessarily so bad for a martial character, is it? Well, why don't we... Okay, if we get it to level 3 on our fighting scale, then we'll see if there's a better Guardian later on. Oh, nice. We actually got a flagship as well. What do you want to name it? Should we name it after our dearly departed father, King Gunsa? His legacy lives on in the form of a mighty... Extremely flammable boat. It's a it's the perfect legacy for him. Ella Mallory is another character who survived being mauled by this dragon multiple times. I'm really hoping no one gets it and we can avenge our father by by slaying the damn thing. That would be such a cool story. I'm I'm genuinely kind of praying that no one gets it. Even though a dragon will obviously be very useful to uh, bolster up our armies. It's a shame you can't call off the dragon riders. Obviously, when you click the search for dragon riders, that's it. People will keep taming it until eventually they either get it or the dragon pisses off or is slain, obviously. Um, that would be really nice to grab. Why don't we turn our attention to Dawn, then? Bear in mind, I still wanted to take Dawn before we moved up into the Mountain of the Vale and then eventually the north as well. Just it makes the most sense, you know. That way we haven't got potentially enemies on both sides of us there. Um, what can we do to get the Kingdom of Dawn? We could marry our current character to a female claimant of Dawn, push their claim on Dawn, and then have our kids inherit. Um, cause it, uh, Mara Wende, and she's actually got a strong claim as well. Holy shit, why? Rowan of Dead, uh, Mother? Why has she got a strong claim, I wonder? Oh, she got the Nymerius Martel bloodline uh, through her father. Oh, interesting. I guess if we went far enough back, we'd probably find, uh, find, find your regular house Martel faces. Man, that could be pretty good. Now, more importantly, she's not part of the main Martel branch. Hmm. Where's the Martel? Yeah, I'm going to go for that. Now, what I'm also going to try and do from the alternate perspective as well 
is I'm going to try and arrange a betrothal with one of... What about Prince Mally? Why don't we try and marry him off? How, how would we do it? We can marry him off matrilineally to someone who has a claim on the veil so that their kids would be born. And then if we get a male born in our court with the veil bloodline, we could then marry them matrilineally to our daughter, our current character's daughter, if we get one, then push her claims. Then we've got a Martin on the Mountain of the Veil. Whilst also setting up for Dawn simultaneously. I think that could be a good idea. Why don't we take a look and see if we can find any... So basically, we just need like a young woman. No claimants? Really? No, you're wrong. I guess we'd have to go for the Veil instead. No, seriously? None? You're wrong. That's 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 a bug. That's, that's fucked up right there. Y you're not right. Members of House Aaron. What about her? She's got a claim on... Oh, but she's... She's already a Martin. Oh, hello. Uh... She's a Martin. She has a claim on absolutely fucking everything. Oh, I remember you. I was gonna say, you were Mortimer's wife. The faceless man woman. Uh... <laughs> what did I just say? You know what I mean. Okay, that's annoying. I don't know why the um, Bloodline claim isn't pulling up on that one then. Not, not for either the Kingdom of the Veil, nor the... Um... Nor the Mountain of Vale have, have claims available. I guess the easiest way would be to find a claimant on the Giant's Lance. Still nothing either. All right, never mind then. Ah! You can't do that. What the fuck? You're great, so I've changed my mind about your proposed marriage with Mayera. It's because by sole dawn this custom, female members of my house may inherit titles. Oh. Right. Okay, yeah, no opinion penalty against female rulers and heirs. Right, okay, that's why Doran's heir is always Ariane. Uh, that's quite annoying. That is really quite annoying. Okay, uh... Well, let's see what we can do about that very quickly. Then I, I still want to go for Dawn first and foremost. That's still our primary focus here. Um, Wendane. Range marriage. We could we could try it again, but I feel like the same thing will happen the second it detects that we're marrying a woman with a claim. It'll break it. Or not. Oh, interesting. We might be okay here. She's disinherited. Oh, interesting. But we can still press her claim. Even though she's disinherited. Just means she won't inherit her father's titles, even though she already has. Um, we can still push a claim and then guarantee that that will come into play. Okay, well, let's see how that goes. Hopefully, they won't break it in the meantime. Oh, really? Castle of the White Sword Tower goes to Lord Tristan. Does it now? Uh, what if I do this? What if I do this and just give it to someone else? Oh, he still takes it, you prick. Um, fucking Baratheons. Fuck it. I'm done with these Baratheons. Seriously, I'm... I'm Remind me of uh, when, when we get up to a more, you know, influential state of this character's life. Just to wipe them the fuck out. I'm done with them. Uh, again? Really? How do I stop this from happening? Because this is going to get a massive pain in the ass if the High Septum is going to frequently hire 30,000 troops right on our friggin' doorstep. Um, also, why is he doing it all the time? What does he want? Septum's coming. Cockles went. What if we can let him have it and then vassalize him? Can we just let him have it and then vassalize him? What do you think? Oh no, we lose cockles when. And 100 prestige. Yeah, take it. There we are. The most devout. And then we'll just vassalize him. That actually might not have been a terrible idea in hindsight. Declare war. Uh, sure claim. Oh, can we not force vassalize the... Oh, that's a shame. Okay, my bad. I was hoping we could force... Um... Should we get him a King's Landing? What? Oh, to take the Sept of Baelor? I mean, that would certainly help out as well, because then the High Septum becomes unlanded, which makes him obviously a lot less powerful. Um, were we not able to do that beforehand? Come on, King's Landing. The Duchy of? Oh, he took the Duchy of King's Landing from us too, huh? Okay, but that didn't really go to plan. Unfortunately, there's no other way to really vassalize him. Because she had annexation. Um, we need greater than 10 diplomacy. We need to be ally to him. If there's a way we can pull that off, obviously not, because it's going to be very difficult to marry someone into his dynasty. Yeah, I don't think that's possible then, unfortunately. Um, what if we try and fabricate claims in King's Landing? That won't give us a claim on the title we're missing, will it? No, unfortunately not. Let me let me think of a way. I'm sure we can grab him eventually. For the time being, I am just going to go, or I'm not. <laughs> Thanks, okay, I appreciate that, you pricks. Glory hound, there is no glory in this world, the enemy is too weak. Um... We might have to fire some counselors then, unfortunately. Let's see if we can pull in some loyalists instead. As, as long as we go for... Good God, that's a lot of dragons. Wow. Our, our, 
Acranion. That's an incredibly powerful dragon. 197. It's got 107 Marshall there. Good lord. What I was going to say is let's see if we can get a new steward and see if at the same time we can also bring in a loyalist as well. So if we send them a gift, then invite them to court. Generally, we don't have to rely on our own diplomacy, the state diplomacy at that stage, as far as I recall. Right, welcome. 43. Um, can we now sack you? Replace you with him. He's a pragmatist. Well, that is a step in the right direction. At least it's not the bloody glory hound. Um, okay, what about our master of laws? What are you? I, have to, I can't believe it doesn't show on that screen in hindsight. Master of laws is... Master of laws, master of laws... Also a glory hound. So if we could sack him, and also our master of ships could be fired without really worrying about it. Uh, Fike, Chancellor, goodbye. Right, who have we got? I'm looking for Pragmatist, preferably. So let's give it to that guy. Balthazar, boom. Uh, let's also sack our master of laws in favor of... I, I very much doubt we're going to find anyone better here, unfortunately. But no more glory hounds, otherwise it means we're never going to be able to go to war against the Psy Septum. Actually, you all do. Uh, send him a gift quickly before he turns up. Oh, shit, or not. Well, hopefully it'll still be worth something when he gets here. Right, send him a gift. Boom, 32. That'll do. Loyalist? He's, he's, he's close to being that level. You know what? He's, that's fine. There we go. Boom. All right. How are we looking with that war declaration now, then? So, high septum. Oh, look at that. It actually worked out perfectly. Holy shit. Right, sure, Claremont King signing will just immediately turn up, and obviously, we've got our retinues there already, so this should take all of about two seconds for that. 56%. Uh, okay. That's a bit annoying, because obviously, the veil, given that he's that we've basically just declared war on the Pope. Whoa. We can assert the Seven Kings with the Iron Throne. Oh, my God. Look. Exclaves kicked in at long last. He lost all his land. He lost Dragonstone. He lost Hayford. He lost Dustonbury. We can usurp it because we have... Oh, right. Of course we have four of the Seven Kingdoms. But technically, we have the Martin lands, obviously. We have Stormlands, Westerlands, and Reach. Oh, there we are. After seeing the Seven Kingdoms of the Iron Throne, you've also captured the Treasury. Boom. I wonder if we stole things we are absolutely not supposed to take from there. We can make it our primary title now. We've got to rename it. The Iron Throne. What should we change it to, though? The Iron Throne's a bit boring, though, isn't it? The Iron Throne. Okay, leave that one with me. Or, if anyone's got a good suggestion, throw it in the comments, and I'll pick one from that. I wonder if that will give us a boatload of claims. I wonder if now we count as the Dejour Liege of the High Septum, for example. That would that would stop him dead. Oh, and we got... Okay, Kingsguard. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we got Justicia. And swap you out for him, whatever. Man, that, that could be massive. That actually might genuinely allow us to push claims on, on everywhere. We might not need to go for these these long-term marriages or anything like that. 65% shit. Okay, it's going to take a while. I want to get this done as soon as possible. Ah, Kingdom of the Rock is gone. And we gain Kingdom of the Westlands instead. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I want to get this war done as quickly as possible without letting the Vale's forces come together. Granted, it's just the Vale. We don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, and obviously, the North won't get involved. Dawn... As well as the Vale might cause some issues. That's obviously three kingdoms, given that they've got the the trident as well. But as long as we're fast here, it shouldn't matter. 97% come on. This one battle might do it. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get out of here, auto save. Okay, we're good. Do we now get the Scepter Baylor? No. But it vassalized him. That's That worked out perfectly. I can't believe it. I don't know how I pulled it off, but my flailing around and random clicking seems to have actually done a good job there for once. Boom. Uh, limited the powers of the vassals of the High Septum in the realm. We have prohibited the faith from arming and the faith militant comprising the warrior sons and poor fellows have been disbanded. That's what the Septum gets. And maybe eventually we'll um, we'll let him put that back together if it benefits us. But I think I think that High Septum got a bit opportunity. That's probably why he was able to get so many troops because he had the 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 poor fellows and the warrior sons. Got it. Question is then, can we just offer vassalization to some of these people, or am I going to have to push claims? Uh. We do have to show claims. Unfortunately, the council are really not up for it again. Zealot, other important wars. Other important wars. I guess they'd probably rather us be taking the north or something like that. Uh, what about Dawn? Declare war on Dawn. Do we have any claims here? Yep, royal claim on Dawn. There we go. That's what we're after. And I guess we could also use the same thing on the Mountain of the Vale. Declare war, royal claim on the Mountain of the Vale on the Trident. Perfect. Okay, that couldn't be any better. Did we actually get in our treasury then? Yeah, a load of stuff that shouldn't be ours. I thought that'd be the case. I think it just gave us the whole of the Empire of Lazar's treasury. A lot of which we're not supposed to have. Um, Noble Scepter, Sword in the Buckle. We can actually equip books then, huh? As a, as a tiny baby child, sure. Um, we can't equip, unfortunately, King Gunther the boat. Not quite yet. Maybe he didn't die. Maybe he just turned into a boat. Do you ever think about that? Uh, Dragon King gives Valyrian opinion. Scepter of Gishka. Yeah, I'm not really sure that was part of the Iron Throne. But, you know, I'm not going to complain too much. Oh, we can wear a crown. Crown of Dawn, Crown of Majesty, Aegon the Fourth. 
I mean, that's got dragons on it. That seems appropriate. We got Maker. That one's quite cool. Storm Crown, Crown of the Rock, Falcon Crown. Um, none of these are really appropriate, are they? Should we have Maker's Crown? No, no, let's go with the one with the dragon. Show that dragon who's boss. Oh, well, this is an obvious choice, isn't it? We've already got six Marshall. Holy shit. Uh, Dragon's Den of Bloodline plus three. All oh, right, okay, that explains it quite a lot. Shouldn't whine. So we got Rowdy or Willful, both guaranteed successes to the martial education both give a bonus to obviously your high level education with martial and then or two crap ones uh, i mean conscientious isn't bad don't get me wrong but obviously we're gonna go for that one rowdy or willful i mean it's a hard choice rowdy is is higher risk higher reward that can become brawny which is arguably one of the harder traits to get um i hardwood of pentos request the right to take the black and sure off you go oh my god we got a lot of money in hindsight um willful though obviously ambitious you can pick up during childhood uh, there's uh, Rowdy is a bit of a risk, because it can also obviously come with dull, but I, I think I'm fine with that. Again, either way, it's good, so I don't know why I'm so bothered. Our trade post. Right, okay, let's focus on upgrading that then, because that could also give us retinue size. That would make that whole war against uh, against Mir more beneficial if we actually do get some more troops out of it. Definitely won't complain about that one. Um, what do you think then? What's your training grounds? Stewart's Tower is always pretty good. Oh, well, we've got to go for the larger force, obviously. Um, that one we've already got it, and then I assume there is. We need Castle Town 1 here. Let's go ahead and put that down next. What about you? I'm going to be very careful not upgrading too much stuff just in case our Regency nick it like they did with the White Sword Tower there. That's a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, because we'll ship, I don't think any of this is worth upgrading to be honest with you. 80 and th 35 archers? Sure, whatever. We'll go for that. Uh, Queen, oh! Ah, fucking Baratheons again. Okay. Queen Obania, the Iron Throne has declared Queen Obania's claim on the Iron Throne War on King Paolini of the Iron Throne of the Iron Throne War on the Iron Throne. Great. Um, your grace. Okay, so the Reach are coming in to defend us. Thank fucking God. Is this an external war then? Also, what the hell has happened to the Reach? Uh. Oh, right. That's where the High Septum. <laughs> that's a bunch of vassals, which doesn't really seem in the spirit of things, but never mind. Um, where are they coming from then? And more importantly, how many troops have they got? 33,000. That's quite a lot. That's over half. That's almost half our army size, I should say. That's quite significant. Are the Stormlands on our side? Yeah, that's still a Martin, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. I'm, I'm just lucky we haven't got any Baratheon sympathizers kicking around, at least in our own realm. Obviously, they've still got uh, Kingdom of the Trident there out of Harrenhal, which is obviously fairly significant. The only downside to living in Harrenhal is, is the curse. So, if you hold Harrenhal for too long, I'm not even sure if it's in the base game or whether that was a sub mod. Um. But as far as I recall, you, I mean, her having hair lip kind of lends itself to my theory. But as I recall, there are a bunch of events where if you're born in Harrenhal, you get like hunchback, hair lip. Strange things will start happening to you. Death, things like that. Just just completely random, terrible things. Oh, in prison, a Stannis Baratheon, you say. Chuck him in prison. Fuck him. Maybe they'll accidentally die in the oubliette. Ooh, that's a good idea. Oh, council on it for it, bitches. Okay. Oh, Giles has died. Oh my god, the dragon had a ruler. Dragon had a ruler? The dragon had a rider, you know what I meant. Well, um, <laughs> dragon's doing maths. Oh god, here she is. 250 ships off the off the shore of the Blackwater Bay. How many troops do you think are gonna climb out of it? The full regiment? 2,500 men? 25,000 men? What do you think? That's right, 3,000. The fucking oh my god, that drives me mad. Um, Hortier Willful, we would love for Willful here. We fucking got Willful. Oh, that's incredible. We've officially got the best the best traits now for our for our martial education. I wonder if we could all stand in King's Landing. 115,000 supply there. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, we could drop all of our troops on King's Landing. It's a little bit unnecessary, but might as well give it a go. Sir Aerion Scales. Again, incredible name for a dragon tamer. Careful. There's another 3,000 men there. I feel like... I feel like they... Oh, God. I feel like any external threat coming from Essos is always going to go the same way, isn't it? It's always going to go the way of... Let's send 3,000 troops at a time, despite the fact we've got enough boats to ferry over 10 times that amount. It just never seems to work as intended. I would like to say about Dragonstone as well at some stage. Uh, yep, there's another fucking 3,000. What did I just do there? Who are you? Master of Coin. Oh, shit. I sent to the wrong province. Never mind. Oh, no. Another 3,000 troops. What? Oh, they splintered. Hang on. They're at war? We could press our royal claim now on the Trident. And take it while they're at war. Queen Obany of the Iron Throne, thank you for your unconditional surrender. And then she is going to get... Oh, hello. Chosen by Rallor again. She's going to say we'll lop her head off, but obviously the Regency aren't going to vote on that. Right, drop the troops. Drop the troops. Let's see if we can push our claim on the Trident. Royal claim. Boom. Go. Get in there. Because she's not going to have many troops at all. What's she got? 30,000. That's more than enough. 
That's more than sufficient. Take him down. So Harrenhal is famously the biggest fortress in Westeros. So I assume, yeah, okay, 22 fort level. I was going to say I assume it's got a fairly significant fort level, which this is going to take us quite a long time to bust down, unfortunately. Obany Baratheon shall stay in my custody. Can we, can we truck her in the Oubliette now? Hang on. Throw in the Oubliette. Yes, they're up for it. What about you? Lord of Silverhill, throw him in the Oubliette. They're up for it. Okay, that's two. Oh, there's another Baratheon. Throw him in the Oubliette. Oh, that's good. Holy shit, that's good. Now we just leave him in there till they die. And as far as I'm concerned, our, our, we've got no blood on our hands from that. As far as the vassals are concerned, too, luckily enough. Right, let's go and just dogpile their troops here. Um, and they move a lot. Not quite yet. Keep moving at them. Keep moving at them. Move a lot now. Okay, now reinforce our troops. They take the river crossing. We take the victory. Oh, look at this. Oh, shit. Please reinforce faster. Please reinforce faster. Help us. Okay. That was a little bit, um... Oh. I told that just, my so just as my soldiers were about to cut an enemy commander into the man threw his weapon to the ground, scabbard to his feet, and left his enemy staring in confusion. He dropped this, my lord, handed me the bounty. A mirror stiletto. Thank you. I, I assume you mean a knife rather than sexy shoes. What have you got for me? There it is. Stiletto and a mirror style. A dagger with a long slender blade and a needle-like point. Probably intended to stab a weapon. Thank you. It's so really... That's going to be helpful when I want to go and stab a blind girl and throw her into a river. And then she miraculously survives, despite the fact that it is essentially the medieval equivalent of... of Venice. Obviously, they had Venice in... Uh, that, was, that was kind of a bad analogy. You knew what I meant. It was a bad analogy. I just said the words badly. Who needs typhus? Who cares if you've got an open wound in your stomach, multiple open wounds in your stomach, and fallen into a fucking filthy, disgusting canal? You'll be fine. So we've got all the battle war school we can possibly get. I think we should just start Siege of Manor Provinces now. Because to knock down Harrenhal, it's going to take years, potentially. 1.4% every 12 days or 8%. Yeah, quite literally years. Um, we should really get our best siege commanders away from Harrenhal. And sieging now whatever the hell we can. Unfortunately, apparently we have no siege commanders. How the hell has this happened? Hand of the King, we're at war. Don't reassign the Council of War. I always fall into that trap. Um, let's see if we've got any siege. See, siege. That we do have one. Rickard, you'll do. 19 marshals, that is incredible. Right, let's put you on the center. Uh, and then we'll give him two backup commanders here just to help him out there. Right, so we've got Durrance, Tybalt, Eldrick on that one. They, with enough time, will eventually take care and hold. These guys I'm going to have doing a tour. And, oh, great. Um... Hopefully knocking down just random provinces to try and... Yeah, look, if it's, if it's just going to be 4% per province, it is going to take bollocks. I was going to say a long time. It might take too long to... <laughs> it might take too long to wait before the Mount of Vale take it back, which apparently is exactly what happened. All right, never mind then. Good good shit. On the plus side, though, nothing mentioned, nothing game. We haven't lost anything. That's that's the uh, that's the central point there. You know, it, it didn't cost us anything to give that a go. What's going on here? Oh, they're in war right now. Boris of Kingswood. Man, I wish we I wish we could do something about that, but again, it's not really not really much we can do. Um let's go ahead and kick these guys out. Uh you guys can leave. I'm not sending them to the wall. Uh they, they were just like they were just random cell swords, right? Your bottom and Lord Boris is currently under threat from his own enemies. Nope, he can cope. <laughs> I think I just pissed off every single one of my vassals saying that, but you know what? Not interested. Um Oh, he, wait, he's not. Kingswood is under attack from Bronzegate. Kingswood is under attack from Bronzegate. Oh, Bronzegate is not an external enemy. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, technically he's the vassal of my vassal, sure. But he's not an external enemy. Is he at war with anyone else? Oh, he is. Who else is he at war with? Uh, Dalston Keeper are also our vassal. He's not at war with any external enemies. No, I will not join you in defense. Get out of here. Apparently they called us in anyway, so I didn't have much of a choice in that one, short of losing 50 opinion with everybody. But... On the plus side, Lord Lucian the Aggressor died in our dungeon. Your oh dear, I think the localization might be a little fucked up there. Your uh, thank you, appreciate that. Uh, so how's that working out for us? Ninety nine living members of all the houses to start or to try and start a blood feud with. That's a pretty bad one. Ninety nine living members. Call for dragon riders. No, we're not going to do that. We'll, we'll deal with the dragon ourselves. We'll be looking at. 10 Marshall, that's pretty good. Actually, we're, we're coming out quite well skilled. We haven't been trained yet, but for anyone, we've only had the possibility of being trained over the past year. So I'm not going to worry about it too much quite yet. Um, I'm not going to ever call for Dragon Riders. We're here to kill the dragon, not not tame it. Hopefully, these two will die off in our prison as well. But, hey, you know what? We've, we've killed off one big breath, and if we have to help out another in a war, so be it. It's a, it's a minor it's a minor thing. What do you want? Manly Martin is coming for war against our titles at some stage. Yeah, good luck with that one. 
Um, just invite back to court. You want to come? You want to come back to court? It is possible. Apparently, he's not up for it. What if we could bribe him, then invite him back to court with a favor, then imprison him? Prepare to go. Okay, now it's updated. There we go. Okay, fair enough. Oh shit! So now we got to pick the wardens. Okay, warden of the north. Um, warden of the north. Who the hell have we got in the north that would even do? Uh, cod of Hornvale. I mean, that's pretty. That's one of our most northerly provinces in our realm. Um, sure, I'm up for that. Warden of the, warden of the north. Warden of the, warden of the north. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Lord Commander of the King's Guard is needed. I know. Let's give it to the Lord Commander. He will be loyal and true. I feel like something may have gone a little bit awry here. One of the East. Let's give that to... I don't like him. No, I don't think I've really had much of a choice, to, to be honest with you. Um, I'm actually going to give it to somebody in the East. Rather than... The Danes are technically in the East. They're in Stormlands. That seems pretty appropriate. Fine. Warden of the East. Edmund Dane. He's in the East. He's on a coast. That's fine by me. Okay, so we've got the choice of brooding or haughty, or affectionate or playful. As I recall, affectionate works against a martial education, whereas neither haughty nor brooding do. So I'm going to go for that one. We actually got brooding, which was the best one out of that. That becomes just, in theory. Um, haughty is obviously quite bad, but I'm alright with that. So we got we got the best option once again. My god, we've already got the 4,000 prestige necessary. Holy shit. Uh, wow. Okay. High hopes for this king, then. Is this Warden of the North? Uh, sorry, Warden of the South. Um, give it to my King's Guard, okay. Tybalt Darry again. Uh, by water, Tybalt Darry twice. Great. So we got the choice of a King's Guard, the man who's already the Warden of the North, a random, just complete crap lord who's nowhere near the south, or the man from earlier again. I guess we'll give it to Ronald Bywater. I kinda wish I'd have given it to King's Guard now. They're all bad options, aren't they? So then, we'll leave that there for today. The first eight years. Oh, fantastic. What a great what a great note to end on there. King Paolini of the Iron Throne has, has had a flawless education so far. Everything that could have gone right has gone right, and he's finally been accepted as a squire. Now all we need is hopefully for them to start focusing on his fighting education alongside that. As I recall, it's when they turn six, you can actually you can start training them, but I might be mistaken. It might be seven, same as you become a squire. So we'll see how that ends up. But in the meantime, though, we'll leave that there for today. I'll skip forward enough time as I can between this episode and next episode to get through his childhood a bit more without skipping over anything important. If anything important happens, obviously, we'll, we'll start from there and then and then go on as usual. Uh, but I will try and let some time tick so that we can focus on the meat of things. Focus on Powellini actually having a bit of uh, having a bit of power rather than relying on this goddamn recent regency. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. This has been a uh, quite a fun one. Thank you to Silkworm, Roll2D1 Games, Leo, Sarabi, Caden Carter, Vacuous Backus, Olympia George, Zazzy7011, William Green, Sirik313, Michael Mullen, Northern Bear, and everyone else on the Insane Tier Levels on Patreon for making the channel possible in the first place. Big thank you to you guys for making sure the channel's going, especially during this lockdown period. Thank you as well to Gabriel Van Duz, Jacob Wolfie, Cody Cope, Void Prince Kibo, Cogsdale, Will Wade, Shlomo, Harry Soft, Fat Joe is a Toe, Warcats, Mr. Awesome, Choma, Demon X Jester, Astro, Zulu, and everyone else at Patreon as well. Thank you guys for keeping the channel going during this time on YouTube. See you all tomorrow for the continued adventures of the new and mighty king, Paolini of the Iron Throne.